yeah, here we go. How's it going, everybody? Thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the importance of audio. We're also going to be talking about why I think that sometimes audio is even more important than the video itself. And then finally, I'm going to be giving you guys a bunch of different tips to help you guys to make sure that you get better audio in whatever video assignment it is that you're doing um, and make sure you get it done for cheap. So I think one of the main reasons that people kind of decide to stay away from audio, they just kind of, you know, point their camera at whatever their subject is, shoot their film, and then it's all good, it's all finished, and that's it. They don't really care about the audio. I think the main reason that people kind of stay away from it is because they believe that it's one, either really expensive, or two, something that you have to be like a professional audio engineer to be able to do. And I'm here to tell you today that that's, that's so not true. You can get really good quality audio with such cheap equipment and with such little amounts of audio mixing skills, seriously. I know there are definitely a bunch of you watching this right now who have probably filmed some sort of video project and in the process you just decided to just take your camera, film the footage and that's all good or maybe you bought like a road mic and put that on top of the camera and still recorded it the same way and that's about it. Uh, I know because I, this that's exactly the thing that I used to do. Now, there's this saying that goes around a little bit, you've probably heard it before, is 50% of the video is actually the audio itself. And I definitely believe in, in that phrase. I think that's a really good thing to live by in film. But sometimes I actually even believe that the audio is sometimes even more important than the video. I believe that sometimes it can almost be like 65% in terms of importance for the whole video. So to show you guys and prove to you guys that audio can actually be more important than the video, I'm gonna give you two examples real quick. One example is gonna be a video where the video quality itself isn't that great, but the audio is pretty good, versus the second one, which is going to be where the video is very good, but the audio isn't that great itself. I specifically shot this in a place that naturally has pretty bad audio in order to show you guys uh, the, the differences between the good audio and the bad audio. So let's go ahead and roll those real quick so you can see for yourself. This is an example of good audio, but bad video. This is an example of good video, but bad audio. This is an example of good audio. This is an example of good video. As you can see, the video that has bad audio quality is way less bearable. You're kind of sitting there and it's just, you, you almost can't watch it because you just you can't stand it. I, I just can't watch it anymore. Of course, no matter what, you want to have the best video quality that you can have as well. But this is an example to show you guys how the audio actually affects the video even more. Where now that we have the bad audio versus the good audio, you can see that the one with bad audio is way, way less bearable. Now, in order to help you guys and make sure that you get better audio, I have two very simple but very big and very important tips that I have been using in every shoot now to make sure that I get better audio and that I guarantee, I guarantee will get you better audio if you use these at all times. Tip number one is being aware of your surroundings. I know, as I said before, it's a pretty simple tip and you've probably heard it before, but I just want to stress how important it is that you make sure that your surroundings are perfect as you can possibly get them for your audio. So many times have I seen school projects, and I'm sure so you guys have as well, where they go and film it in like a park or something, just somewhere that they think looks really good for the video, but then they don't even think about the audio and it just ends up sounding just Oh, so horrible. So to help you guys with that, I went out and filmed a bunch of examples of places that specifically have really bad audio or just things that you have to look out for. So number one, construction sites. This of course should be a no-brainer, but I can't even stress to you how many times that I've seen a video done or just some something that they, they filmed in a city and you think there's no construction in the background, like, oh, you're not gonna hear it. All of a sudden you go into post to, to go edit the, your video and the audio is like, what the heck is happening? There's a jackhammer in the background, there's a bunch of hammering going on. You didn't think it was an issue, but then all of a sudden, it's just the only thing you can listen to in the audio. So just make sure whatever location scouting you do, just sit down, take the time to kind of listen to your surroundings Surroundings. Listen, I say, are there any construction sites around here? I can't hear them. Nope, everything's good. All right, that's one thing checked off. Number two is wind. Wind is one of the most horrible factors when it comes to audio for any type of film. So a couple ways that you can actually make sure that you can deal with the wind properly. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have a dead cat for whatever microphone it is that you're using. These are specifically meant and very good at kind of cutting through the wind before it gets to the mic so that it kind of just 
d deadens down that wind, deadens what? It kind of, it just gets rid of that wind a bunch and it makes it way, way more bearable. Another thing that you can do is make sure that you're not filming in a super open area where a bunch of wind can just easily get to your microphone. Film in places where you're next to very big objects such as maybe like a really big building, some sort of wall, a bunch of big trees or anything like that. Film around those objects if you know that there's probably gonna be wind outdoors so that they kind of, they kind of add as like a, another shield from the wind and your microphone to make sure that you don't have those issues with that wind. Number three is any type of running or moving water. I know you really wanna film next to all those waterfalls, all those water features, whatever it is. They look so beautiful, they end up looking perfect on the camera but they are an absolute nightmare when it comes to your audio. Do whatever you can to try and stay away from, or at least be as far away from as you can, from any sort of water fixtures or natural running water or anything like that. Anything that you know is probably gonna make a bunch of loud splashing noises that's just gonna screw up your audio. Number four is roads. Now, of course, it's pretty hard to stay that far away from roads as, you know, they probably have just a bunch wherever it is that you're trying to film. Just do whatever you can to try and stay as far away from them as you can, or just make sure your microphone isn't pointed anywhere near them or anything so you don't get, so you're not just hearing all those cars just zooming by and that's all you can even focus on and you can't even hear your actor. Number five is bad air conditioning. <laughs> I've definitely had that example before. You think, okay, we're filming inside, wind's not gonna be an issue, there's gonna be no other factors, we're gonna be all good. You film the scene, it went absolutely perfectly, and then you go back into post, and just just, just this air conditioning in the background that's just like, and it just destroys all of your audio. Obviously, you have a couple choices of what to do here. Make sure to go to a place where there's not gonna be bad air conditioning. Some buildings, some rooms specifically have way louder air conditioning just because that's just how they happen to be built. Go to a different room, try and find a room specifically with, without a bunch of bad air conditioning. Or, of course, you can just turn it off if you have access to that. Number six is hecklers. Nice shot composition, nerd. As much as we wouldn't like to admit it, as a filmmaker, you're probably gonna have this at some point. There are those people out there, if you're going to film in a public place, they see you with that camera and they're just like, ooh, okay, how can I how can I get into the background of that video? How can I how can I mess this up for that person? Of course it's something that you know we don't really wanna have to deal with, but there are just some people out there that are gonna do that. So just kind of be aware of your surroundings once again and just make sure that no one is in your frame or like plotting against you and your audio. Number seven is unwanted beeping and buzzing noises. Now, if you've never heard this before, it's actually something that comes very commonly when you're shooting right next to a bunch of technology. I actually didn't even know this until literally just a few days ago, but all technology, for the most part, pretty much most of it, whether it's kitchen appliances, computers, phones, whatever it is, for the most part, all of them are on at all times, and so they're actually making little very, very faint buzzing and beeping noises that you, your ears, can't even hear. However, the microphone is, of course, going to pick it up. So just make sure that you place your microphone as far away from any sort of technology as you possibly can, and it, you just won't even hear it, it won't be an issue. And finally, number eight is hissing noises. Now, if you're watching this right now thinking, what, what, what is he talking about, hissing noises? What, what does that even mean? Well, first off, I'm not exactly talking about any snake habitats or anything like that. I'm actually talking about something that can be fixed specifically with tip number two, which is get your microphone as close as possible to your subject as you can. These hissing noises normally happen because the microphone is so far away from your subject, such as if you just put a Rode microphone on your camera and that's where it's filming from. And the, the span where the microphone is trying to reach all the way over to the subject, it's picking up all this unwanted like hissing noises and just this, this white noise kind of thing. So tip number two, do anything in your physical power to get that microphone as close to your subject as you possibly can. This, once again, is probably a duh thing, of course you want to get it close, but it's something that no one really ever takes the time to actually do. If you take that extra time to just do whatever you can to get that microphone right next to him, right out of frame, then it, you'll get so much better audio, seriously, you have no idea. Even right now, I have this boom microphone sitting right above me, it's just barely out of the frame, it's right there, but you can't see it, but it's what's getting us way better audio. Now in order to show you guys how important it really is to get that microphone as close as you possibly can, I picked out five specific examples with different microphones and different setups in order to show you guys the difference between them. So I took my friend Connor here and I went out and filmed him saying the exact same line five different times, the exact same way, 
with different setups. So the first setup, what we actually did, I put the camera on the tripod, pointed at him, just press record. So there's no microphone, it's just whatever the internal mic in the camera is, that's all that it was. And this is what it sounds like. But what does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. As you can see, it sounds horrible. You're barely hearing him, you're hearing all the cars in the background, all that hissing, all that echo because of where we're shooting, and it just doesn't sound good at all. It's not focused on his voice at all, and it just sounds really horrible. So the second thing we did is I actually placed my Rode microphone onto the camera. So now we have an external microphone instead of the internal one in the microphone. Now we have one on the outside, which is the Rode mic on top of the cam. Of course, the Rode mic is specifically a shotgun microphone, so it's really trying to pinpoint where Connor is. So let's see how that does. But what does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. As you can see, it starts to get a little better. We're now focusing a little more on Connor's voice. The problem is because it's so far away, not only are we focusing on Connor's voice, we're focusing still on everything that's kind of in his direction. So we can still hear those cars, that echo, and all that background noise that we don't want to hear. So the third thing that we actually did, this is when we start to get into doing whatever we can to get that microphone as close to Connor as we can. What I did is I actually took that very same Rode microphone. I didn't change the microphone whatsoever. No expensive condenser mic, still just this $50 Rode mic. And I actually took a mic stand, a mic stand that I had bought beforehand, and I attached it to the microphone via these specific, specific ports that you need to get it into there. I attached that there. I put it as close to Connor as I possibly can, set that mic stand up, faced it right at him, and actually what I was able to do, I bought an extension cord that is specifically for my Rode microphone, so that I was able to lead the extension cord all the way from the boom mic back to the camera. And this is what that sounds like. But what does it do? That's the beauty of it, it doesn't do anything. Now that we've gotten closer, you can really hear how much better it actually is. Now we're more isolated on specifically Connor's voice. The fourth thing that we actually did is I took the exact same setup with the mic stand, the boom mic, which is actually a Rode mic, and instead of having the extension cord go all the way back to the camera, I unplugged that and in its place with the extension cord, put a sound recorder. This is an H1N Zoom sound recorder that I got. Very helpful device. Um, this is actually gonna be an external uh, audio recording device, so all the audio is gonna be recorded into the sound recorder while the camera is recording the video. And this is what that sounds like. But what does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. As you can hear, even though we're using the exact same microphone, it sounds just a little better because the sound recorder actually itself takes out some of the background noise and everything. So it really helps to have that extra little device to make sure that you can, you know, it helps you with that background audio. It helps a lot having two different tracks and then you can, of course, edit it and help even more in post. Now the fifth thing we actually did is I used a lavalier mic and attached that to Connor. Now if you don't know what a lav mic is, it's one of those little microphones that you actually attach to the person. Um, so that the microphone is on them and on their person at all times. And with that, I actually used this nice little trick that I learned from Darius Britt. He is also another filmmaking YouTuber. He's very great. Just go go check him out and he, he'll teach you a lot as well. But his tip is actually to take a bunch of medical tape. It's very sticky and very stretchy. And actually wrap that around the lavalier microphone itself. What this does is it creates a tubing around it and creates kind of an extra layer so that the microphone is never at any point coming in any contact with any skin or clothing or anything and you hear that kind of that ruffling of the clothes. We're not gonna have that because of that tubing. And then I took these little Rycote stickies. They're actually specifically meant for lavalier microphones. You take it off the paper, place it specifically on the area where you want it to be, whether it's clothing or skin, whatever it is. You take the brown part off and where the brown part was, you take that lavalier mic with the tubing, put it right on the sticky and then it's stuck there. You can, it's gonna shake around, it's gonna move. It's gonna be stuck there for a pretty long time. You basically don't have to worry about it. So once I set Connor up with that, that was actually going to the very same sound recorder that was recording with the, the Rode mic beforehand as a boom. That same sound recorder is actually in Connor's pocket. So the cord leads through his shirt kind of back to his back pocket, um, going to the exact same sound recorder. So this is what the lav mic sounds like. But what does it do? That's the beauty of it. It doesn't do anything. As you can hear, it sounds just as good as well because we did everything we can to make sure that that microphone is as close to his mouth as it can be. It's literally not even a foot away. It's just like right here. So we're gonna get way, way better audio. It sounds way better. Of course, the only bad thing about having to use a lav mic is it does have to attach to something. It can't attach to the camera because 
how are you gonna hide the cord or anything? So you have to have some sort of recorder on the person. And that brings me into the equipment that I actually used to do this and how expensive it was. I'm sure there are some of you that just watched that right now and are thinking, what, what, look at all that crazy equipment he has. There's a stand, there's multiple microphones, there's a sound recorder. Well, that's gotta be so expensive. That is very wrong. Never during this process did I ever use any sort of real boom mic or any sort of condenser mic. I was literally just using my $50, $60 Rode mic that I use for everything. That's it, that's all most of it was. The Amazon mic stand is literally just about $20. The extension cord for the Rode mic going back to the camera is about $10 to $20, that's all it was. The sound recorder, now that is something that's a little more expensive, but comparatively to how expensive even you know, microphone or a really expensive sound recorder was, this one was only $150. Trust me, that is nothing compared to how expensive it really starts to get. This is very cheap and you get very nice audio and it's just so helpful to have for anything. The lavalier mic, I'm sure some of you are thinking right now, what, well, a lavalier mic, well, that's, that's so expensive. The mic that attaches right to the person, it's not. This Boya lavalier mic that I got, it was only $20. That's it. The entire microphone, the cords, all the all whole setup besides the sound recorder is only $20. That should be the best example of showing you how you don't even need a bunch of expensive equipment to get good audio. Now, of course, if you're gonna use the lav mic, you do need the sound recorder, but if you're trying to get way better audio anyway, the sound recorder is probably one of the best investments that you could possibly get. I would say even before a really expensive microphone, literally just buy a Rode mic and you can do so many things with it. And all of this, if you're just constantly thinking about it and making sure of it, whatever shoot that you're doing, will help you get way, way better audio. To re-emphasize everything, we talked about how important audio is, how it's actually sometimes even more important than the video itself. I also gave you guys tons of tips to help you and make sure that you can get better audio and to make sure that you do it for cheap so you don't have to go buy some crazy microphones or anything just because you think that's what's gonna help. Just like anything in filmmaking, audio is not about all the crazy expensive equipment that you have, but it's about how you use it. If you are new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. I'm using this YouTube channel as kind of a way for me to be able to learn more about filmmaking and continue in my process as a filmmaker. And at the same time, by making these videos, I hope to eventually help all of you guys as well so that you can kind of go on the same learning journey like me of filmmaking. But please just make sure to subscribe if you're new around here, if you enjoy the video, if you enjoy filmmaking, or you wanna see more tips just like this. As well as that, make sure to leave in the comments and let me know, is there any sort of specific type of thing in filmmaking you wanna learn? What type of videos do you wanna see? Maybe you want me to review a movie or anything? Make sure to tell me in the comments section below so that I can make sure that I'm getting the content out that you guys specifically want. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like if you like this video and enjoy the tips that I gave you. And subscribe if you want to see more, um, if you want to learn more about the filmmaking and the different things that I have to say. And I will see you guys in the next video.